coming to the Diamond Select Toys panel at uh, 3 o'clock on Sunday. Uh, I know it's uh, late in the day on the last day, so if you're either very tired or you have a lot of stuff you still want to do and you don't get to it and you got to get out of here quick. So I'm going to try to move things along. Uh, I'll probably still fill the hour and then we'll, um, we'll have a Q&A session afterwards. I actually will break as we go along to some Q&As. Uh, I've got some mini mates to give out to questions. And then um, I have some raffle tickets coming, so if we have time at the end, I'll hand out the tickets and we'll do some drawings for some bigger stuff. Uh, that is uh, bigger than one question. Um, so uh, let me introduce you to the people uh, to my right. Uh, to my immediate right is uh, Jean St. Jean, who is one of our uh, internet sculptors. Yeah. You may have seen his work on the Batman Classic TV series busts uh, and the statue, some of the statues you did. Um, uh, Batman, Batman, correct? No, that was a. Uh, I think that was a I did the Joker, Joker of the new statues and all the busts, all the bangs, and I was doing some of the Marvel stuff. Yes, and he works with some of our Marvel Select, of course, and uh, you may have known him from uh, our uh, Monsters and Universal Monsters lines as well. Uh, and to his right is Mr. Eli Livingston, uh, another one of our famous sculptors, who is perhaps best known for his work on uh, the Universal Monsters. Um, some universal monsters banks as well as our um, uh, aliens and predator banks and uh uh what am i forgetting there's there something i'm not forgetting on the what was the last thing you did for us i forget uh the, the last thing i did for you was the alien big shaft the clear dome okay and then the most recent thing was the fluke man oh yes the, the fluke man of course for the x-files which you may have probably glimpsed up when i was trying to figure out how the slides presentation work um so uh Brought along a bunch of pictures of stuff that's upcoming. Uh, so a lot of, some of it you, I'm sure you've seen, some of it you may not have seen. Uh, some of it is in the case upstairs. Some of it I didn't break pictures of. Um, so I'll just run down all that, uh, take a break every now and again, and uh, you guys, and I'll ask for questions uh, along the way. I will take little breaks. So I'll start off, I did this alphabetically, because I like letters, um, with uh, Alice through the Looking Glass. Uh, you may have seen released some Mini Mates recently. Uh, our Mini Mates are upcoming. Uh, we'll talk about Mini Mates later on in the uh, panel. I'll put those under B. Um, and uh, but this is our uh, PVC uh, figure pair, uh, similar to our gallery or MP Talib lines, uh, and they are two different pieces, uh, but their bases connect. And this will be a, uh, about the uh, forty-five dollars suggested retail price range. These should be coming out, um, if not by the end of the year, then early twenty seventeen. And these are our select action figures. Uh, apologies, I meant to re. Uh, reframe that shot. Uh, the uh, Alice is a little bit over larger than she should be, but uh, each of them comes with a section of uh, the town from Underland, and uh, you can connect them together the basics of that, connect together like that. And we do have plans for more figures in the series, more characters. Uh, aliens. Uh, we've been releasing uh, Miss Regular Mini Mates in two packs, as well as box sets and deluxe sets. And uh, this is our first deluxe set with the Power Loader and the Alien Queen, and this is the next one. It's going to be the Space Jockey. Uh, I think actually that alien, that uh, figure is a little uh, oversized. Uh, he's actually a little shorter than the um, than where that knob protrudes from underneath the barrel of the whatever it is that the Space Jockey sits in. Anyway, that's a cane, and this is our battle damage cane, so he has the uh, damage helmet. And there's going to be a variant at that's the comic shops and specialty stores. Uh, should be out uh, not by the end of the year again, early 2017. Uh, it's going to be paired up with a Toys R Us exclusive version, which has a darker paint scheme mirror the lighting from the movie, and it will come with uh, Dallas, uh, who will have also, again, the darker color scheme on his, uh, on his uh, our, uh, space suit. And each of those sets comes with a bunch of eggs, so you'll be able to put together a little field of eggs to go around your space jockey. Uh, next is first aliens vehicle we're doing APC. Uh, that actually will probably come out before the uh, space jockey. I've seen some package samples on that, so that's on the way. Uh, and this is especially a version that it comes with Gorman in his uh, mission uniform. He does have a removable hat and a bandaged head alternate. And it does open up, if you didn't see it in the case, it's pretty cool, sliding doors, everything like that. Uh, and there will be a Toys R Us exclusive version. They'll have some uh, mud and battle damage, and that one will come with Ripley instead of uh, Gorman. Uh, we are working on the dropship. It's a little, it's still a ways off. Um, we're going to give a little breather into the APC, but that is definitely our plan. We do want to do it. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, Batman classic TV series. Here is Clay's uh, Clay Moore's uh, Batman. Uh, it's again 12 inch scale. Uh, it's our premier collection. About 150 dollars to get the retail price. The Joker, uh, sculpted by Gene. That will be next. Uh, King Cut, sculpted by Gene here. Uh, 
has been, um, I don't know if that's a final, I think that's a final image. I don't know if the paint uh, changed from that photograph. It may, it may have. Yeah, actually, we tweaked it out. The crook, the, the hook is a different color, right? Yes, we, when we do stuff for shows sometimes, we kind of have to bust them out kind of quick. So we kind of cheated a little on that crook. It's actually supposed to be red, green, uh, blue, green, and white. So we corrected that and we also added the uh, stripes on this head, headdress there. Okay, yeah, I think the corrected version is on the display. Yeah, there, it's up yeah. in the case up there. So he's been, he's up for pre-order now, uh, as is the Mad Hatter. And we have not yet offered uh, the bookmark, uh, but he will be next. It was designed by Barry Bradfield. We have displayed him at uh, San Diego, so you may be able to find pictures of him online, but we haven't, uh, we didn't bring him here to this one. Yeah, I'm still correct. <coughs> Uh, the Batman uh, classic TV series Shakespeare Bust Bank. This is going to be a vinyl bank, uh, life size, um, $85 suggested retail price, and the head does go up. The button doesn't function, the dial doesn't function, but above the button there's a coin slot, and then at the, uh, the bottom there's an uh, access to get the money out. And um, we do not have a picture of it. I meant to pull a picture of uh, the, our the Batman cosplayer actually holding it, but uh, we do have up in the case the Batmobile bat phone, uh, which is uh, the red phone. Uh, you'll put the receiver and there's a coin slot seat. Let's do a couple more. Uh, Beetlejuice uh, is uh, one of our newest licenses, and we're going to be doing Vinnie Mates for him. Um, we might show up twice in the, in the slideshow, but we'll get to some more Vinnie Mates later on. There, there are uh, four inch vinyl figures. Uh, they're just sculpted in the style of our Minimates block figures. Um, they're posed uh, to many poses from the movie, but the heads are articulated, so you can uh, turn left, right, up, down, and put a little bit more attitude or whatever you want to do to customize that pose. And they're suggested retail price in ten dollars. And these are being solicited end of this month, so you'll be able to pre-order them end of this month, and they'll come out in the spring. Uh, Batman animated series. Uh, our next resin bus is going to be Batgirl. Uh, I believe she'll be offered at the end of this month as well. Uh, Man Bat has, is up for pre-order already, so it'll be coming out um, probably by the end of the year, I think. Scarecrow, uh, also he should be out very soon, I'm fairly certain. Aquaman, uh, swimming in this shot. <laughs> uh, but uh, he's on the in the case. We haven't actually solicited him to reach out yet, so it's going to be a little while before you see him in the store. Green Arrow has been still offered. Green Lantern, also up for pre-order. Hawk Girl, she might be the next one. You might see her uh, within the month. I don't believe she's out yet, but I think within the month you'll see her. Uh, for Justice League, Martian Manhunter. I should say it's a Batman and Justice League. Uh, we have uh, the li license to both as well as Superman. Man, I mean, he's been solicited, I believe. Uh, we were showing Shazam uh, for only the second time uh, today. Uh, he has not gone up for a pre-order yet. And the Riddler was shown for the first time today, and he's not up quite yet. Either. Oh, and uh, uh, Brainiac uh, for Superman. So uh, we do have Brainiac coming. Um, he will be uh, offered, I think, in the next couple of months. Our Batman, our DC Gallery line, uh, formerly known as Femme Fatales, we've added some men to the line, so we've changed the name a little bit. Uh, but uh, you've seen Lawyer Harley Quinn, she's going to be one of the next ones out. Zatanna, should be short for that. Uh, Black Canary. Galatea. Huntress, and New Adventures Poison Ivy. We've previously done a season one and two Poison Ivy, we're gonna do this later season Poison Ivy. And again, these are PVC figures, uh, $45 for the retail price. Uh, you may have seen our, our Batman and our Joker for that line. Uh, the Joker that we did was him with a hat. Uh, this is an upcoming variant we're going to offer uh, where he's holding his laughing fish, and uh, instead of just having his foot on a barrel, we've got it on uh, Batman there. Uh, our premiere collection will continue. Uh, uh, this is a uh, higher price point, $150 resin statue, 12 inch scale, uh, and this is Nurse Harley. Uh, not seen here, she'll have a little heart on her hand. I believe the display copy has that, but uh, this photo does not. An old photo, I apologize. And uh, before we move on to Ghostbusters, are there any questions that anybody has about anything they've seen so far or? something we just can't wait another break to go to. Yes, sir. Um, what gave you the inspiration to do Alice into the Looking Glass? It's, uh, you know, it's a blockbuster franchise. We could sign the license before, you know, for the, long before the movie came out. Um, and it was, you know, it's, a, it's we're big fans of the actual Alice myth. 
at Diamond Select Toys. There's a lot of people on staff who are, who are fans of Alice in, in any you know iteration. We've done a couple different versions. We did the Alice Madness Returns video game. We did um, an original Alice as part of the Tempe Pals line. Um, so it was just something that we thought was a cool opportunity that came up, and we thought we'd go after it since there, you know there's an established fan base for the first movie, and there's a big sequel coming out, and it does very well internationally, and we sell all over the world. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just having that opportunity was just uh, too good to pass up. Uh, yes, sir. Did somebody feed you, or did you learn it by yourself? I think that might be a question, a better question for a sculptor. How about uh, Dean, Eli? How are you? How are you educated in sculpture? Well, I spent maybe 20, 30 years trying to be a musician, and that didn't work out <laughs> well. I went to school to study piano and composition and uh, percussion, and I ended up sculpting. So. Um, I kind of, I was into toys anyway, in comic books, so I started noodling around with some sculpting on my own, and then I found a job at a little job studio, a doll studio, did some work for them, and like 22 years later, I'm still doing the same thing, but I'm mostly self-taught, self-taught, I didn't go to art school or anything, just uh, have a knack for it, I guess. <laughs> Eli, how about you? Well, uh, I did go to school for... Uh, Industrial arts, uh, mostly make book facts. Uh, the sculpting thing was more of just uh, a sideline thing I had to learn uh, for the craft. Uh, then I kind of took a break from the make book facts world to work in the toy work industry. Uh, from that, uh, so from that, I kind of they had me starting off on like smaller things like accessories, a hand here, a foot there, and eventually it kind of just, you know, they started giving me bigger and bigger things to work on. So. A lot of it was things, for me, it was something I learned uh, on the job. Great question. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, in the front. Uh, I think we've done it, definitely done it both ways. We do get, a, um, I, as someone who gets a lot of the emails from people outside the company, I, we do see certain studios coming to us saying, hey, would you be interested in doing and not, not always, not necessarily big studios, you know, smaller studio uh, video game companies or smaller comic publishers. And, you know, um, it's tough. We'd love, you know, we'd love to have an opportunity to do everything, but it's a, it's, we have to look at how well it's going to do in the market. But there's certainly places we've gone after and we've looked to find out who we would call and we've called them up and said, hey, can we do this? And sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes somebody else has it and they, they you know, they have uh, the category that we're interested in and maybe they're not making it. It's definitely gone both ways. It happens happens all sorts of different ways. Uh, yes, in the third room. Uh, how do you prioritize what to do with the pipeline? Like, I like the Hunter statue a lot, but obviously like, in uh, Justice League Unlimited, she's with Question a lot. Do you plan on making a statue for Question, for instance? Uh, I haven't seen him pop up on any line plans. Uh, I wish the president was here so we could uh, talk about you know long-term plans for the lines. But um, I haven't seen him pop up. Uh, there's obviously a lot, with Justice League, there's a lot of people that we'd like to do. Um, having that just opens up the whole DC universe to us. I mean, we haven't even shown anything for The Flash yet, in, and he's one of the big seven. Uh, but I believe we're in at least the 2D stage for, for a bust of The Flash. Okay. So, um, uh, but as far as the question, he might, he might be a little bit farther down on the list of, uh, of, of characters that we, that we absolutely have to make before this license you know, ends. Um, but if we decide we want to keep going, then you know the, the, the potential is unlimited. One might say, I mean, no, it's not fun. Um, so yeah, it's, it's possible, but um, you can write into the president uh, Chuck, who I wish was here. Uh, he's only here at the beginning of the show. Um, he answers questions every week in Ask BSP through artisanum.com. So you can submit questions to him, and he'll. You may not give a long answer, but he'll tell you if it's something that's possible or been considered, or if there's still room in the schedule for it. Um, and, and that can sometimes you can get some really good information. Sometimes you can't really talk too much about stuff, but. But he, if, if he had the opportunity to make everything, but time is, uh, is a factor because, uh, you know, contracts have expiration dates and you have to decide whether you can make it last for another three years or whether you think you're, you've run the course, essentially. Yes, in the front. Sorry, I just said the nurse hung the workers scaled on the other statues. Yes, she's um, the premier collection to stay, uh, scale. It's, uh, it's about a 12 inch scale. Um, uh, we did that for uh, Claymore's bat, uh, TV, TV pieces. Jeans, uh, TV Joker, um, and uh, the Marvel pieces that we do like Rogue, uh, Gamora. Um, so it's it's bigger than the PVC line. PVC lines are out of nine inches. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, and uh, but yeah, and also new materials. Uh, in the back, in the red hat. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of the Batman animated series, and you said there are a whole bunch of characters you're trying to get to. Yes. I'm wondering any chance will Captain Clown be in there? It's a very obscure. You character. killed Captain Clown. No <laughs> yeah, I, I love that line. Um, I don't remember what Captain Clown looks like, but I now want to go look him up and see if there's any possibility. I'm gonna say uh, no, probably, but I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm very tempted to look him up and pitch him as a hard pitch to the president. <laughs> Uh, joining us now is uh, Mr. Robert Yee. He's uh, one of the chief product managers for. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, maybe a couple more questions before we move on. Uh, yes, in the, uh, in the red shirt with glasses. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, are you guys planning any video game franchises for your later toys? Uh, I don't think we have any that are on the table. Um, we're still doing stuff for Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna, what we're going to do after the Garden Warfare 2 line comes out, but I, I don't think we have any on deck that I am aware of. Uh, I would tease him if I, if I could. I'd say, yes, we do have some, but we don't have any currently. But, you know, if it's the right thing comes along, we always look at it. Um, and we've had, we've had good success with our video game devices. Halo we did for a long time, and Alice Madness Returns was a nice little uh, group of figures we did. So, anything's possible. Mega Man. <laughs> Mega Man, yeah. Uh, believe me, the, the big video game licenses. I think we, I think we've looked into them mostly at, at some point or another. Uh, but uh, there's, you know, a lot of them have master toy license fees, which makes it hard for a small toy company like us to get involved. Robert, is anything I'm saying? Any? Uh, I actually know one, but we haven't told him yet. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we wanted to help. No, no, I wouldn't. I, I, I would be, you know, that, that's exciting. I'm excited now. <laughs> Less on the yeah, Should I be excited? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, you had your hand up. One last question. Yeah. Uh, do you have to actually pay for the licensing, or like it's just just through contract negotiations? Well, the contract is for specifully money. Robert would know more about uh, that. Legal more contract. Yeah. Yes. Legal question. Robert is here. Tell yeah. us, Robert. How much okay. do we pay? Not exactly. But it's a very <laughs> short, very six-year presentation I have about the licensing contract. First thing is you pick the licensing. Second thing is you call up the licensing. Third thing you negotiate them with. Should I go on, or should I just? But tell, 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 tell me how the payment works. How, like not, well, well, basically, it's a, it works on a royalty basis. So you oh. negotiate in advance, and you work off the advance, kind of like marriage. So you um, <laughs> you basically work through the years, and um, you pay through the advance through a percentage of what your sales are to a certain tier of channel. Now, if the company actually approaches you, like you said earlier, would would there still be a fee that you have to pay them if they approach you though? We might be in a better bargaining position. There, there's no finder's fee or anything like that. That You're talking about through an agency. Most of the time that, that it, right now it's just going through licensors directly. Mm. But there's always, you know, it's just like I explained, it's just an advance okay. and you, okay. you pay us percentage more. All right, cool. So the amount they get varies based on how much we actually, uh, one, you know, uh, once it goes, if we go past that, then then they can make more money uh, than, than, what, than the advance, but if we don't, but if we don't make, you know, if our royalties don't get that high, we still have to pay that amount. Mm. So if we don't sell enough toys uh, that we thought we were going to sell a lot of, maybe we don't make back the advance, and that's not good for anybody. So you know, uh, well, it's, it's fine for the company that licenses it to us, but it's not good for us, and it's not good for the potential for more toys. Does know, anybody want to know about more legal stuff or toys? I could do both. <laughs> toys. Or? He's also our legal director for the for the company. He reads over all the contracts and everything like that, in addition to being being uh, seeing. Uh, Many, many, many of the products we do. Uh, I'm gonna move, go back to slides. We'll take a little break from from the talking, um, uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, so we're on Ghostbusters. Uh, you've seen this Ghostbusters Slimer cookie jar. First Slimer cookie jar ever, as far as I can tell from my very brief internet research, which boggles my mind. And I like to, I like to express how surprised I am every time I show this. But this should be out. Uh, I don't know if they're by the end of the year, but they're also the early 2017. Uh, the tumblers, uh, which are very cool, just hit comic shops especially for this past Wednesday. So if you haven't tracked them down, definitely track them down, they're very cool. Uh, series four uh, should ship for the end of the year with Slime Peter and Gozer and Walter Peck. And um, they do, uh, will be at comic shops, especially stores with the diorama pieces. And they will be at Toys R Us without the diorama pieces. But if you want to build the rooftop diorama, which is on display in our booth, then you got to get them to the comic shops or special stores. Anywhere that's not Toys R Us. Um, and series five will be showed um, 
the terror dogs very briefly before, but we're showing them here now again. And um, the taxi driver zombies, this is the first time we've shown them anywhere um, at, the, at this show. So this will be series five, and these will come to the last three pieces of the rooftop. Uh, we are looking uh, how to continue the line beyond series five, um, you know, looking at things, the dioramas, costumes, whatever. So we're, we're definitely looking to do more Ghostbusters, but right now this is the end of the rooftop series uh, figures. Um, and there is also uh, an exclusive that's out now at GameStop, it's a glow in the dark version of Slimer. Now it doesn't come with any diorama pieces, just a, the figure with the interchangeable heads, but he glows in the dark. Uh, the regular Slimer doesn't do that. Uh, Gotham. Uh, you may have seen uh, Aaron Richards and David Mazuz were here this weekend, uh, but uh, Bruce Wayne, Barbara Keen, and Mr. Zaz uh, are all, all hit comic shops, I believe. This uh, Some comic shops this past Wednesday, they may be still shipping uh, some of the shipments, so you can look for them, check for them next week if your shop didn't get them this week. Um, and they come with, at special shops, they come with those diorama pieces. We do offer basic ones at Toys R Us. And that uh, Arkham gate is actually a little bigger than that. It actually does clear her head, and it's it's pretty wide. It comes in three pieces in the, in the case. Uh, and and uh, Zazzy's comes in two pieces as well. Uh, but if you get a couple of different Bruce Waynes, and you can filter the little Wayne library in there. And we are working hard to work on Series 4. Sculpts are almost done. Uh, Robert's been um, putting together the coolest diorama base uh, one of the coolest diorama bases we've ever done, uh, and it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, would you say that it's a buildable diorama base? Uh, for two of them. For two of them, okay. So, we'll be able to get two, two of those figures in series four and put, put them together for something kind of cool. Uh, uh, Gotham Mini Mates uh, continues, uh, series four. We're finally getting around to Harvey Bullock. Uh, you can see some of their accessories up in the display case. Uh, uh, Harvey comes with some coffee. Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Hugo Strange comes with an interchangeable lab coat, which is very cool. And um, Mr. Priest has a, a glasses, a no glasses head. And uh, you can see that um, there's a little clipboard with the GCPD autopsy report that comes with uh, Dr. Tompkins. Uh, I Zombie is our uh, other uh, DC TV license. Uh, and uh, we're, doing, we're working on a new uh, figure for I Zombie. Uh, it's still in the, the working stages. Uh, sculpting's almost done. Uh, we're gonna have some cool accessories with it. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, this cool uh, Max Razor Pine glass will be coming out uh, within the year. As everybody knows, this is of course the company that makes this drink that turns people into zombies. Mm -hmm. uh, Mallrats, uh, Jay and Brody will be coming out in the first uh, the first two figures in the Mallrats series. Each one of them comes with a section of the mall. Uh, see the comic shop here and the carpet store with Jay. And then, uh, and they come with pretty cool accessories. And also, um, uh, Silent Bob and Renee will be the second wave of two figures. And uh, those are the bases they come with. And uh, Bob comes with some great stuff. He comes with the removable utility belt, interchangeable uh, pointy ear head, and uh, a grappling hook. Does he come with pretzels and a little cup? <laughs> Brody comes with a, a very small chocolate pretzel. I don't think he comes with more than one. He does come with a small chocolate pretzel. Uh, he does come with a cookie in a bag, he comes with a small white cup. And uh, he might come with a video game controller, I think. Um, yes. yes, he does. There's, there's one of those kicking around. Um, and Bob comes with um, all that stuff, plus the toy truck. And uh, are there blueprints with them? Yes. Yes, blueprints. And Jay comes with the sock full of quarters and the bat. And they also, they both, uh, Jay and Bob have the interchangeable double horn hands. So. And one of them comes with the, um, the magic eye and potion. Really? Oh, okay, awesome. Oh, great. It doesn't actually work. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it does. You just have a problem. <laughs> uh, and Ray comes with her first in uh, shopping bags. Um, at the end of September. Alright, and let's see what's next. Marvel! Alright, we'll go through Marvel and then we'll take another little break. So, uh, Marvel, uh, this is our Marvel Gallery Deadpool. This is, uh, again, that uh, 9 inch scale figure, $45 suggested retail price. Um, he should be coming out, I think, in the next couple of months. I don't know if I've seen a package sample of him yet. I believe I have. Oh yeah, this is a gene piece. I forgot. This is absolutely a gene piece. Gene Saint Jean sculpted this one. I apologize if I haven't called out any other gene pick sculpted along the way. I get so excited about stuff. Gene sculpted these last thing. Oh, Doctor. he's in me. Doctor Strange. Uh, this is actually a uh, Phil Ramirez, I think. Um, uh, this will be one of the next ones we do. It's in prototype in the case. The Hulk. Um, you know, Sam Greenwell, right, that is Sam Greenwell. Um, this one is, uh, that's actually a production sample from the case of Lee uh, fairly soon in the 18 factor series. So by the end of the year, you should see Hulk and uh, also Spider Man, who I don't know the slideshow. Jessica Jones, we just listed recently. I believe that's an Alejandro Pereira piece. There's another two pictures of Jessica Jones. 
uh, Medusa, another uh, Ferrero piece. Um, we added uh, an additional paint uh, effect too for a torso, so it looks like there's like a, a mesh in her uh, outfit, which is pretty cool. And she's supported by her hair, uh, levitating over her hair, which is very cool. Spider-Man, there he is. Uh, he's actually last alphabetically, but he's going to be coming up uh, probably first, uh, so you'll see him in the next uh, couple months. Uh, this is another premiere collection. Uh, so this is a larger scale, about 12 inch scale, resin piece, sculpted by clay. This is a uh, uh, Spider-Gwen unmasked. Uh, you may have seen up in the case we had a masked version, and that'll be a later version we're going to be offering. Um, I don't know if we finalized how it's going to be offered. It might go to special shop. I don't think it's going to be an exclusive, but um, this one is going to be coming out very soon. I think within the, within the month we'll see that. We have a package sample of it. Marvel Select, you saw the Destroyer in the case. Uh, I've been explaining that there's Odin Head. That's actually a production sample up there in the case. And this is another gene sculpt. Thank you, bro. Uh, another gene scene gene sculpt. So uh, look for him uh, to hit um, uh, before the end of the year, I believe. Uh, movie Doctor Strange. I thought I had him in here, but I don't. Uh, so Movie Doctor Strange. So we didn't have any official pictures for a while, but he's on display in the case as well. Uh, he should be out before the end of the year, hopefully. Uh, My Little Pony Banks. And we took a little uh, time to sort out um, some stuff with the banks, but all the banks that we've solicited, uh, all the My Little Pony Banks we solicited, including uh, Dr. Hooves, um, Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, and Trixie, uh, those will all be coming out uh, in the next uh, uh, couple of months. Not Trixie? Forget Trixie, yes. Um, not Trixie, but the other three or four that I just mentioned are going to be coming out in the next couple of months. Uh, and then uh, DJ Pony 3 here will be on his way up there. It may be pronounced Pony, but I like saying Pony 3, so I'm going to say Pony 3. And these are vinyl banks. Um, I don't know why Marvel, my little pony snuck into my Marvel presentation, but for Marvel Mini Mates, uh, the next set to come out is going to be Series 69. We're calling this our most wanted wave because a lot of characters who hadn't been made before, uh, and people were asking us, why hadn't they been made? And uh, there's a good question because we made them. So Black Knight and Enchantress and Falcon in his classic costume, who's done a modern one, and Tiger, and then two blizzards because you demanded it. And, uh, and a mandroid. And the mandroid armor actually comes off, and underneath is uh, Phil Coulson wearing a cool gold uh, shield suit and uh, holding a cup of coffee. So uh, that's a pretty cool feature there. Uh, series 70, after that, will be Doctor Strange. Uh, we should have that out uh, shortly after the movie. Hopefully, for the end of the year, we'll have that out. Um, there will be two packs uh, at uh, Specialty and Toys R Us. So Toys R Us will have two of these sets, and then one of the sets, um, the two sets on the left. Um, will be a Toys R Us plus an additional set of, I think, uh, Astral Form Doctor Strange and another one of the, um, the uh, they're called the, oh gosh, I'm blanking on their name, but uh, the lady up there in the Zealous. corner, Zealous, thank you. Somebody, somebody was wondering if, uh, if it was an actual character named Zealous, but they're just, they're just your average run of the mill Zealous. Um, they're very zealous, and overzealous, if you might say, about certain things. And, uh, a uh, male version of the Zealot will be at uh, Toys R Us along with Astral Form Doctor Strange. So we get these uh, two sets and then the other one at Toys R Us. And, but these, those, so those four on the right will be exclusively at Comic Shop and Specialty Stores. So Wong is only at Comic Shop and Specialty Stores. And Christine Palmer. And Casual Strange. Uh, showing here for the first time, this is Marvel uh, Series 72. Uh, 71 is going to be based on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, so I can't show you even the logo for that, but um, uh, it will be very cool. Uh, so 72, I'm going to show you because it's as awesome, uh, if not more so, and it's going to be all Wolverine. So um, we're going to have uh, that two-pack up there and that two-pack up there, uh, with Spiral and Mojo, and maybe that's right, and um, the VR Helmet Weapon X. And then um, Ninja Attack Wolverine. Uh, with that removable shirt and little arrow stuck into it. Uh, we'll come with a hand ninja, and um, Silver Shamrock will also come with a hand ninja. Uh, I believe that's going to be an even... I haven't checked to see exactly what the numbers are going to be on that uh, in terms of the case breakdowns or anything like that, but uh, so you'll be able to army build the ninja if you buy all four sets. And there will be a counterpart series at Toys R Us. Um, there will be a counterpart series for, so for 71 at Toys R Us as well for Guardians of the Galaxy, but for Toys R Us you'll get uh, those two sets, and then uh, we're calling it Tactical Wolverine and uh, Marvel Now Magneto. So that will be exclusive. That set will be exclusive to Toys R Us. Yeah, if anybody remembers, the, uh, the Tactical Wolverine is actually, I think, based off a Sylvester cover that I have kept yeah. since I was a kid from in the back of preview. Oh, wow. And I think it was, and it was called uh, Weapon X Files or something. Does anybody remember that too? Hmm. 
Uh, it looked familiar to me, but I couldn't remember where I'd seen it before. Uh, Marvel, I think we're calling him Marvel now, Magneto. I don't know when he went from black to white, or white to black, or vice versa, but uh, we're doing black. black now. Is he back in black? It is after Labor Day. Uh, and of course, our um, series of Marvel Now, Marvel Now Now, the now New Now, is going to be coming out um, uh, later on this year. I think we've seen production examples of those. So uh, by the end of the year, we should see these in source. This is the American First, a series of uh, Marvel Flying Bag Mini Meets. No, we don't have another one planned necessarily. I'm just saying first, just because it is. Uh, and so this will be, well, that's not even true. We didn't want for each of Anyway, these will be blind bags, so um, they'll be sold in the sort of 18 uh, counter display. Um, and you've got the first ever mini mates for Deadpool 2099 and Venom in a space outfit and Silk and X23 as Wolverine, um, plus new, uh, and the first Invincible Iron Man armor as well. And Spider Gwen unmasked is the first time. Um, I, I think that's the first time we've done unmasked Spider Gwen. So exactly one year from now, you guys are going to get the non glue counter feeling for uh, one of the characters. <laughs> so hopefully a month from now, I hope it's not too far away. But, uh, um, uh, as many of you know, at uh, Walgreens, we have an exclusive line of animated style model animates. Uh, and this is Series 3, which is going to be coming out next. Series 2.5 is trickling out to stores now with, this, with Man Thing, our first ever Man Thing. Uh, that was a fan request, actually, Man Thing. Uh, the Walgreens buyer was very anxious to find out what normal animates wanted to get, and they got Man Thing. So Man Thing is out in some stores now. Um, uh, that's series 2.5. There's also um, Power Princesses in there, and uh, another member of the squadron who I'm blanking on. Nighthawk. Yes, Nighthawk is in that series 2.5. Uh, this is series 3, so you get another member of the squadron in Hyperion. You get our first Falcon, uh, first ever Squirrel Girl Mini Mate ever, uh, first ever Spider Man Noir Mini Mate ever, uh, as well as an um, animated version of Ant Man and a modern animated version of Captain America. Uh, and that's Itsy Bitsy Spider Man from the time when Loki turned them all to babies. <laughs> Why is a uh, Jetpack Spider Man setting the other Spider Man on fire? That's why. Spider Man Spidey Noir is worried about his hat surviving that jetpack incident. Because Spidey loves jetpacks. And Spider Man with the jetpack does actually come with interchangeable thumb hands, but cool. thumbs up hands. Uh, so we reeled the show for the first time this, uh, this week, uh, Series 4, uh, which will be out probably in 2017, because Series 3 hasn't quite hit yet. Uh, but Series 4 has first ever ever Scarlet Spider mini made. I don't think we ever did a hoodie for Scarlet Spider, but anyway, this is the first modern Scarlet Spider. I think we did a while ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Long time ago. All right. This is the first modern Scarlet Spider. Uh, first, uh, I, actually, it's not our first Ultimate Green Goblin game. We did one from based on the comics. So it's the Ultimate Green Goblin. Uh, Spider Man in his environmental suit, um, uh, so he can use it underwater and in space. And uh, the bubble actually comes off. So you yeah, the dome comes off. So it's part of the shoulder pad. Uh, anti-venom, bulked up anti-venom. Uh, that's uh, Hulk, who comes with Speed Demon, is actually powered by the Speed Force, so he's a bright, not only a brighter green, he glows in the dark. I've been playing the clip on a loop in our case, it's very cool, he gets all super powered up speed, he's like chasing Speed Demon around the country, and Speed Demon's like, come on, help me, Hulk's after me! And, uh, and then Hungry Dark Fury's like, oh, I'll protect him, and the Hulk like totally trashes him, it's awesome. Uh, so um, that Speed Force is a different... My Speed Force is a different than Speed Force. And then uh, Iron Skull, in the Iron Man armor and Doctor Spectrum of the Squad. It's probably Series 4. Uh, I think we should be expecting those in 2017. Series 3 uh, might start showing up before the end of the year. I'm not sure the exact time on that. Uh, a few more Marvel things. Uh, the first Daredevil Mini Make box set is going to hit uh, within the month. Uh, you may see the package sample uh, in the base with some cool Barry Bradfield art artwork on it. And it comes, he could turn into uh, uh, Matt Murdock, this version of Daredevil. And then Jessica Jones uh, will come out around the same time with uh, Luke Cage and Trish and Cooper. And she does have regular hands too. She comes like a video camera and they all come with cell phones. It's awesome. And uh, Daredevil Series 2, we've solicited, uh, but it won't be out until spring. So you got Stick, and he comes with a stick and a sword. And you've got uh, Karen Page, who comes with uh, a big fat file folder and also uh, a Filled with pages and then an accessory uh, of um, the x ray of uh, Punisher's head. And uh, Electra has the energy evil face there, and Daredevil has uh, the hand where the pistol's been taped to his hand uh, by the Punisher, and he also comes with a chain so he can recreate the whole stairwell battle. And, um, and uh, don't forget, there's going to be a lot of hand ninjas in Marvel Series 72, so stock up. Uh, let's take a break for you on to the Muppets. Uh, 
Uh, question, in the back with the hat, the hammer's right up. So with some of the magic collector pending in July, I mean, December to the belt, you had said they might want to do real Ghostbusters. Do you fit this deal, or do you guys might go into the realm of uh, Robert and I are, are big advocates of it. I don't think we have any plans right now for that, but um, but certainly something that is on the table as far as I know. We did a really cool line of real Ghostbusters mini that was awesome. And uh, I, Robert and I would love to see figures based on it, but uh, we'll see. I'm not planning on more information the license anytime soon. Uh, so we're looking at what could happen in series, after series five, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, yes, Tom Servo. Um, what determines the length of your contracts or how long you have the license? Are you able to determine that or is it up to the uh, people you're, uh, who own the license, essentially, the rights? So most of the time it's, um, it's about two to three years. And when it expires, you would negotiate toward the, the last six months. Okay. Uh, That's a legal question. Yeah, I know it's awesome. Uh, Goku in the back there, in the middle there, in the middle of the crowd. Or Vegeta, are you Vegeta? He's Goku. Goku. So I know the um, new Power Rangers movie is gonna come out next year. So do you have any plans of making any Power Rangers figures? Uh, not, not currently, no. We don't have any plans right now for Power Rangers. Uh, if the movie does fantastic and launches a huge, massive franchise and maybe somebody visits again in the future, but we'll probably be battling a lot of huge companies that if they aren't already heavily invested in Power Rangers, um, they want to become heavily invested in Power Rangers. I think Bandai pretty much owns Power Rangers. Uh, so, I mean, you know, maybe there's some room in there for like a niche product for us, but it would need to make sense and it would need to, you know, be something that would break our bank probably. So, uh, you know, anything possible. Uh, in the green shirt there. Yeah, um, Marvel Select is amazing. Are there any plans or is it possible for DC Select or any assistance with Power Stature or anybody to transform into an action figure or something like that? Um, I think uh, DC action figures are always something that we're, you know, we, 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 we'd like to you know think about in the future. The fact that we're doing Gotham action figures and iZombie action figures is very exciting for us. Um, so, you know, I think, the, I think that would be something we'd obviously like to do, um, but there are obviously a lot of people who are having their fingers in the DC comics, comics specifically, <laughs> comics, so, and, and even DC movies. Um, so, you know, we keep asking, and uh, maybe someday we'll, we'll be able to take a shot at it. Um, but uh, for now, we're pretty happy with what, with the, what we've been allowed to do, because we didn't have a Warner Brothers license until we started the DC animated line. That was the first time we actually had a direct uh, contract with the uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, all the other stuff we made before, mini mates for DC, something like that we did that through DC Collectibles or or um, Play Along, um, other companies that had the license. So um, we're ha we're happy we're happy to have made the progress we've made in terms of building a relationship with Warner Brothers, and hopefully that leads somewhere where we can do stuff because our boss loves that. So what? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you there in the front? Where did you get the idea to do the um? Uh, it might be the fact that he damaged the pants a lot. Uh, which figure particularly? Do you mean the statue that we showed on the slide presentation? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think when we were doing the, the PVC line, we wanted to do, when we started doing male characters, he was at the top of our list, right, Hulk? I mean, he was, he was one of the, he was obviously a big you know, everyone wanted to do. He's, he's a little bigger than the other figures we've done, so it's a, kind of a special case for us. It's probably the biggest one we've made, but, you know, there's torn pants and there's not torn pants. He's, more, he's been with torn pants a lot more than he's been with not torn pants. Because whenever we started developing anything, we always go through the source material. We look at like uh, what type of version of the character we like to look at. And we then we actually work with the artist and we draw like, the whole art. And uh, it's kind of you know, like if we wanted to have you know, the torn pants or the number of torn pants, you know, rips in the pants, you know, that's something that we would add in there and we work with the sculptor on. So looking at the source material. Yeah, we definitely have to have that reference too because the the person who gives us a license, Marvel or Comics, they'll say, well, what is this based on? So we'll have to show them the time. Well, here's the time when Hulk had torn pants. They'll say, okay, that's great. So if we want to give them non-torn pants, we probably have to find something that's actually more or less based on. We have to probably have to find a good picture of him hulked out wearing non-torn pants and say, this is the one. These are the pants we want to make. These specific pants. Um, that's how it works a lot of the time. They want it to look like the stuff. They don't want us to take too many liberties with uh, the material. Uh, yes, in the striped shirt with the glasses. Are you going to make like more Marvel characters like Vision or any others, or are those the ones you want? Vision or what's the other one? Um, or any other Marvel characters, or are those? 
Uh, the Marvel you, as action figures or um, or mini mates or PVC figure line, anything in particular? I think that would be against the wall though, Kevin. Yeah, I mean we're 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 not planning on stopping making Marvel anytime soon. So the Marvel Select line uh, has a lot of stuff on deck for next year, including a lot of characters that have not been made as Marvel Selects. Um, and the Mini Mates line, you know, we're trying to get new characters in there all the time. Um, and the PVC line is still new, so there's so many characters that we have, have options to do for that. And we're trying to mix in some movie stuff, like we did with Ant Man. Um, so um, you know. Uh, when it comes to movie characters, we can't necessarily make all the movie characters at the same time, so we only make a certain number of figures per year, and our movie license in, in most of those cases is actually only about a year or so. Is that correct, Robert? Yeah. Yeah, so so it's a little bit more limited. Uh, but um, but in terms of comics, uh, sky's the limit. It's just trying to find uh, homes for all of them. Uh, yes, in the next to Tom Servo. Well, I've been, work I've been trying to build my Spider-Man collection of villains. I was wondering if Our boss loves Spider-Man almost as much as he loves Batman, uh, even more. And we've done Electro, and we've done. We've actually done Mysterio twice. Oh, are you talking about mini mates or action figures? Action. Action figures. We've never done Mysterio. He'd be really awesome action figure to make. We should make him Robert. Um, but uh, <laughs> we haven't even done a Doctor Octopus except for. Um, time he wore a trench coat briefly, um, and that was a long time ago. So I mean, we haven't brought him back. It would be cool to do a classic Doc Ock, but classic Doc Ock is a bit of a hard sell. Um, I'd love to see more Spider-Man though, so I think Chuck probably would too, but it's tough. Every now and then you get one where it's like, oh yeah, definitely Hulk, and it's like, hey, he's kind of an old guy with wings. And you think, and then you see another Marvel guy, you're like, he's, he's a lot cooler looking than Vulture, and maybe we should do him instead. It's, you know, you, you got to kind of weigh who's going who's gonna to resonate the most with different with, with your customers. So. Or the, Morbius would be a very, very cool Marvel series. Yeah, write a lot of letters about Morbius. Yes. <laughs> I've been trying to sell that one to him. Yeah. So write in to AskGST through artasylum.com, which is our blog page, although uh, we're doing tons of web stuff, uh, so we may see some revision that page soon. But artasylum.com has a place where you can write into the president and ask him specifically, you know, what are the chances of this guy? And he may not give you a long answer, but he'll tell you if it's somebody who he's been thinking about or if it's somebody he's not really ever considered. He'll say if he's, we've never considered that guy, if they, he's never considered it. But if it's a Spider-Man bad guy, he probably has. In the front, yes. Two questions. Any chance of one of our Parasite Jaws movies? No. Next question. No? I'm just saying that because I'm, I'm fairly certain, like 99% certain, that we will never bother going after that license to make minifigures for Jaws. Minimates jumps to shark, maybe. Yeah, well, Minimates jumps to shark. <laughs> but, I mean, because you know how you make Jaws, and then basically that'd be like a that'd be like a vehicle. Yeah, and then you put put Quinn in it and drive around. Um, but uh, no, that's I, I I honestly I can't even see. We can I, make it like the float from uh, from uh, Animal House. Like a what? We can make it like the float, like put wheels on it. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be great. If we could make, make Jaws with wheels, I would I would push for that. What was your other question? Uh, are we with the RC uh, updated uh, Punisher Marvel Select uh, figure? I bought. I know the old one. Is yeah. It's one of the first we ever made. I think it was one of the first four. Um, I don't. I can't say that it's never been discussed, um, but I also can't say that it's necessarily something that's the top of our list uh, to do. Um, what, what happens a lot of times, you'll see, um, as the new movies come out and like the television shows and stuff, a lot of times there's been kind of an interest in bringing back the comic versions also. Like I've worked on, like I would have wanted to do uh, like the Burn Hawkeye for the longest time. The only reason he kind of came around in the mix again is when Hawkeye cropped up in the Avengers movie, then Disney wanted a comic book version for their exclusive. So sometimes they, uh, that wasn't me. <laughs> so sometimes a movie version of the character will influence whether a uh, comic book version pops up also. So, never mind. With the Punisher series in the works, you know, maybe that get, get, makes it a, a more likely to do it, but uh, they probably also want to look at sales of uh, our classic Punisher because he's still he still sells he's still he's still a good seller for us. So I mean, if it, if sales are at point where they're like, yep, yeah, where we we finally hit capacity on on our classic Punisher, let's let's give them a makeover. I mean, that's a possibility. Um, yes, with hand way up in the air, way in the back there. Yeah? 
the second series of the TV-based Daredevil movies. Did you want to know any, uh, anything particular about them? They're going to be coming out early next year, um, and they're going to be in a box kind of like the one we showed for series one, and uh, they're going to come with a bunch of extra parts to switch around. But uh, if, if when Daredevil season three comes around, maybe we'll look at doing another set, and uh, we're looking at some other shows too. We're, we're looking at Luke Cage, and um, of course we'll look at uh, Iron Fist once we get some cool more reference for it. We'll see if it's something that we can turn into something cool. Uh, yes, here on the aisle. Yeah, I'm a statue collector, and you guys just did the premiere collection four. Mm -hmm. I want to know: is there a possibility, or are you going to release the Silver Surfer as part of like the diorama? Because I remember this was part of an original diorama Clay had did years back. Yeah, uh, I don't think there's any plans for it right now, but it's a, it's a possibility down the road. Um, you know, the door is open, uh, but uh, no plans right now. It's not like on our calendar or anything like that. You know, I just realized I never even finished the slide presentation. I'm taking all these questions. i got to give away some stuff. We're going to run out of time, and then nobody's going to get anything, and that's going to stink. So Muppets <laughs> Series 3 uh, is going to be coming out uh, possibly around the end of the year, because I've seen production samples on that. I don't think we've seen package samples yet. Uh, but it's very cool. They all come with their guitars and all sorts of cool stuff. I uh, love its Minimate Series 3. This is exclusively a comic shops and special store. Don't look forward to Toys R Us, just comic shops, specialty stores. Uh, these are all mixed up. I don't know why they're mixed up like this. It's like, oh, uh, one, two, oh, yeah, go up and down. Top to bottom, two pair, one, two, three, four, four, four different two packs. Uh, the band members are together, and um, newsman was Pepe. Uh, Muppet Punt Tumblers, uh, these are going to be coming out. Um, I don't know I don't know if you've seen package samples on these yet, but again, this might be early 2017 item. Uh, Nightmare for Christmas, we're also going to do tumblers. Um, I think we've solicited those very recently, possibly not yet. It might be end of this month, we'll see solicitation on those. So, uh, similar treatment for those. Uh, we're bringing out a two-pack of Jack and Sally in their Santa gear, and then we're going to do a single version of Jack with a different head, uh, and then we're going to do a single version of Sally. Probably. That head's not final. I think we finalized it or something like that. <laughs> and those are the big 12 inch cloth dolls. And you can see here um, uh, Mayor and uh, Finkelstein and the regular Sally. The regular Sally's out now, I believe, but Mayor and Finkelstein will come out soon. They're about 14 inch scale. Uh, you know, he's a little shorter than Finkelstein's maybe, maybe a foot max. Uh, Mayor's short, but his hat goes up to like 14 inches. <laughs> and Jack's like six, 14 or 16. He's huge. Um, Mini Mates, we're going to continue the line. Toys R Us is going to be getting uh, a couple of figures from the special assortment as well as this two pack of movie witches uh, this uh, holiday season. So look for them before Halloween, hopefully. And then Series 4 um, was previously going to come out uh, before the end of the year around Christmas, but um, we're going to tweak some stuff and we're going to bring it back uh, for fall of next year. So look for Series 3 with the Toys R Us exclusives uh, now, uh, coming up soon, and look for the Hot Topic assortment, which has a couple of exclusive characters, including Behemoth. Uh, that's in stores now, actually, Hot Topic. Uh, but uh, especially, we'll come back with a new series next year. And there'll be Toys R Us exclusives again. Like uh, these guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, the rest of the band. See, the sax player and then the other two guys. So fall of next year. Uh, Beetlejuice. Um, how's this over here? Beetlejuice. That's totally not alphabetical. So Beetlejuice, <laughs> we're going to do a play the last for him as well. Uh, with the ad uh, for his bio exercise. Uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Uh, we're going to do Glassware from Wally World. Uh, so one was just Marty Moose and one with the whole Wally World gang, which I wish I knew all the names of all the Wally World characters, but I totally don't. Um, uh, and uh, Predator, which comes after National Lampoon. Uh, we're going to do more Mini Mates. Uh, this is the next series. Uh, it's not final paint on something. One of those is not actually final paint, but they're going to be out, um, uh, I believe, by the end of the year. These are two packs. So you'll see um, two pack uh, from Predator 1, two pack from Predator 4s. And then uh, these two guys are from Predator 2. Oh no, that's a mix of Predators and Predator 2. That's the warrior Predator in the middle. He's going to come with either a regular Falconer or a cloaked Falconer from Predators. And uh, then Toys R Us will have an exclusive two-pack. They'll have uh, some of the Predators, um, a bunch of the Predators from that series, and then they're going to have an exclusive two-pack of Water Emerge Predator from the first movie and Cloaked Warrior Predator from Predator 2. And then we've got some more figures in the works. You can see a lot of these characters coming up in 2017. You got Lambert from Predator 2. You got Hanzo and um, uh, Isabel from uh, Predator Tours. And then you got, um, oh gosh, uh, Poncho and Aunt Anna from uh, Predator 1. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies, uh, Garden Warfare 2. We're going to be putting out the new batches of figures uh, based on the new game. You can see the clusters of figures here. This is who's going to come with what. You know, different uh, plant based weaponry and. Um, zombie-based weaponry to come with each Plant vs. Zombie 2-pack. 
so that's very cool. The Reed comes with like different helmet, uh, flower pop helmets and base helmets you can wear. It's very, very fun. Um, I don't know if those will be out by the end of the year, but Hawthorne Road 317 for those. Uh, Star Trek, we're working uh, hard to work on the next generation phaser, uh, which you can see here. Uh, here's a quick picture of it lighting up. And then we're going to go to the next one. Uh, that's going to be a 2017 guy. Hopefully, the year. Khan is, uh, we've seen a package sample of this, so this might be out by the end of the year, guys. This might be very cool. I think you got interchangeable parts. You can sit him down in the chair and have him shaking his fist and go, ah! <laughs> And uh, the Romulan Bird of Prey is going to be our next uh, electronic ship. Uh, we had it lit, lit up in the case and the batteries. We left it on for overnight and uh, five minutes, so it's, it's not worth it anymore. But the, uh, it's going to have light up windows, which is very cool. Light up like uh, uh, photon torpedo launcher in the front, and the nacelles change color. And Robert like oversees all that stuff, and it's entirely very awesome. Um, and the next ship is going to be the Reliant. Uh, which is uh, something people keep asking for, but I keep telling them we we're making the Reliant, we're making the Reliant. The Reliant is going to be next. It's still in the development stage. This is a 3D sculpting we're doing. Eventually it will be finished and we'll have put it and we'll paint it and we'll have the prototype. We'll show it to people and it'll be awesome. I'm going to try to make them finish it by February because I'm so excited to see it. Uh, and by then the Ramen Bird Fair will be out, so there'll be no excuse. Um, Yoga Hosers is uh, Kevin Smith's newest movie. We're going to make a two pack of movies for that. Uh, I think, hopefully, we're, we're fingers crossed. Uh, Vinnie Mates, uh, Ghostbusters just hit last week. Uh, the classic Ghostbusters meant to simulate that first movie poster where they're shooting up at the uh, at the something invisible enemy. Uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass will be coming out very soon. Again, these are the four inch vinyl figures with the articulated heads. Uh, Robbie the Rope, uh, B9, Lost in Space, uh, Vinnie Vinny Mate, uh, Nightmare for Christmas. B9 actually ships next week, uh, by the way. I just saw that on the shipping dates. A Nightmare for Christmas, hopefully by Halloween. Predator, uh, maybe a little after that. Actually, we've seen package samples of that, so that might be around there too. Uh, the Big Chap Alien, I think we just solicited in the today, this month's preview, so later this month you'll be able to pre order him. Uh, it's different from our regular warrior aliens. Uh, Caddyshack, these are the first collectible <laughs> figures of Caddyshack ever. First figural things of anything for Caddyshack. I think it's the first merchandise for Caddyshack, and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, I don't know if there are any other Rodney James but action figures out there, but now there's first so. anything. <laughs> first Ted Knight anything? Wow. <laughs> no Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. It's easy to grin when your ship has come in. Uh, and that's uh, Buddy the Elf from Elf. Um, who has not been solicited yet, and uh, so he's a little further off. Uh, probably closer to Christmas for that guy. That guy, that guy. Um, Forbidden Planet, we're doing Robbie the Robot. I, I might have actually called B9 Robbie the Robot before, I apologize. B9 from Lost in Space is not Robbie the Robot, although Robbie the Robot was on Lost in Space, but this is from Forbidden Planet, uh, the movie Forbidden Planet. And this is a video. Uh, Iron Giant. And Watchmen. Uh, we're going to do these three guys. And, uh, well, these are movie based, uh, based on the movie Watchmen. I got five minutes. Uh, and we're also going to do some mini from Iron Giant. That's cool. And Pluto. Eli! Eli! Eli sculpted. Eli Livingston sculpted this Pluto Man uh, from X Files, uh, an iconic, horrible, horrible, horrifying villain uh, from. from well, I don't know if I've seen that episode. I don't know if he's a villain. But he actually visited the sewer. He's horrendous. Yes. And uh, and this will be. Uh, this has been solicited. You've heard of this now. And it'll be out uh, probably by the spring. So it's a vinyl bank, point slot in the, in the bottom, point, uh, point slot in the back, point access door in the bottom, and uh, very, very cool. And we're back at Alice again, because X goes to A after many years later. So, um, let's see, uh, I'm gonna, I should have been having something, I shouldn't be handing out tickets this entire time when I was taking questions. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just gonna give them out for the best questions. Let's see, let's see who gave out, who, who asked the best questions around here? Um, who asked the one about, uh, Robert, what was your favorite question? Um, was it the one about uh, how uh, licensing works? Huh? Definitely not that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Gene liked the one about Morbius. Who asked about Morbius? Yes. That was the winner. Alright. Do you have a Savage Hulk? Do you have a Savage Hulk? That's the Morbius. Do you have a Savage Hulk? Oh, He told me my question was soft. Zach, like you could give some gifts to anyone under 20. Yeah. Alright, we're not being ages. We're all kids at heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 19 years old. Where are all my friends? Is anybody in the room named Robert Austin? <laughs> <laughs> the kids had some of the best questions this time. The kids up here had some very much. I'm going to get some good questions. They had some really good questions. <laughs> <laughs> you 
guys, you guys asked some good questions. Um, what's Tom Server? Tom Server asked a good question. What's Tom Server's question about? I forget. Well, like, uh, contract. Oh, I like the contract. I asked a great question. I love what That was a good question about contract. Next time, I'll do raffle tickets. They're so impersonal. So impersonal. We can think about what we've learned today. And we can learn lessons about, about other things. What other questions do people ask? Who's here waiting for the next uh, panel? Yeah, who's waiting for the next panel? Oh wow, lots of people are. You guys don't get any of They tell me what takes priority, and then they give me a basic idea of when they need it, and it usually gives me plenty of time. Like anywhere, it can be anywhere from if something's kind of in more of a rush from like a couple of weeks to a couple of months. Of it. <coughs> Excuse me, the destroyer took a while, and some other projects take less time. The Batman bus usually go pretty quick. Kind of depends, you know, but uh, nothing leaves my studio until I'm. Pretty happy with How are you in life? Well, usually they give me a decent amount of time to work on what I gotta do. Uh, the thing is, <clears throat> sometimes they I get like all the time in the world, sometimes they only have like weeks to get something done. Uh, usually the important, like, uh, usually the most uh, important thing for me is to have as much reference and input as possible. Uh, for instance, uh, like with all the movie based characters, including the X Files. I mean, with the X Files, I had a little bit. Uh, the Fluke Man had a little bit of room for uh, imagination uh, because you don't really see you don't really see the creature throughout the entire TV show. Uh, Monday the end, uh, you have some of the time there. Uh, that was something uh, I had to like study that thing like there's no tomorrow. Uh, it was quite a challenge. Uh, <laughs> oh, and if you want to see uh, the work that uh, Eli, Eli did, Eli did the alien in the Predator Bank, that's actually uh, that's the Don Zoom, and for the same thing as the Don uh, Bank. And then the girl asked the same question, which they're already answered. Uh, uh, yeah, my question. Well, she gets if you guys want to see there, they're, they're actually going to be going back to the booth if you guys want to have more questions. <laughs> and uh, Zach is now giving away bags and breakfast now. <laughs> 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 that's really my surprise. 